Here are eight published studies which ask the same question you're asking. What's the best way to treat a dog with a cruciate ligament injury? Believe it or not, there are 2,615 dogs on this page. Which of these 10 images grabs your attention? Is it one of the three computer gait analysis studies? Is it the combined opinion of thousands of experienced clinicians? Or are you most interested in how 305 board certified specialists would treat their own dog? Chances are it's none of these. Human nature means these two individuals capture our attention. One's had an operation, the other's back to normal. The name for our preference for vivid individual stories is availability bias. It's easy to forget that every statistic in every study is a much loved pet. The carers who enrolled their dogs in these studies did so to help others make good choices. Your challenge is making sense of the data. How do we work out the best way to get to this? You'll find a plain English summary of these studies in the YouTube comments. If you're a visual person like me, stay tuned for a quick tour of the literature. Here are 30 dogs. They represent our ideal outcome, unrestricted exercise and no need for painkillers. What's the likelihood of this outcome if we don't operate? In a 2017 study, 173 dogs were managed using custom braces. In the long term, 6 out of 10 required painkillers, with 4 out of 10 taking a combination of 2 painkillers. The average lameness score was 3 out of 5, with 5 being the severest possible grade. If we're considering surgery, this is precisely the starting point we're after we've a far greater chance of making our patients better than we do of making them worse. So, how does surgery compare? Three studies, including 329 pets, use computer gait analysis to see if operated dogs return to normal. Here's the take-home message from those studies. Of all the operations, TPLO consistently achieved the best outcome. It resulted in normal function within a year of surgery in around 95% of dogs. This means we don't need to lose any of these 30 individuals. Now, what are the downsides of TPLO? The answer is cost, surgical aftercare and risk. So how many of our 30 dogs would suffer a complication which would trigger a second operation? In a study of 1,519 TPLOs performed by board certified specialists, around one in 30 needed a second operation. How does TTA measure up? A review of 91 published studies showed a second operation is about twice as likely after TTA. If you read testimonials describing TPLO or TTA outcome, the chance you'll notice this important difference is very small. The other easily missed difference is the impact of a board certified specialist. The reason you'll miss this is that non-specialists rarely publish their results. This doesn't imply their results are poor, but what it does imply is that we don't know the outcome of non-specialist TPLO. Ultimately, surgery is a bit like photography. It's not all about the camera, it's about the individual taking the photo.